He's been making the rounds promoting a new novel with author James Patterson. Here now, Mark Penn, former Clinton advisor, Stagwell Group president and author of the book, Microtrend Squared, along with Matt Brainard, a former Trump campaign data and strategy director and the executive uh, director of Look Ahead America. Good to see you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. morning. Mark, kick us off here. Obviously, you've got a lot of history with the Clintons. What did you make of the former president's comments this week? Well, I, I think he hit it right on... Right. When he said it wasn't his finest hour, I mean, I've rarely seen the president as, as befuddled uh, as he was in his interviews. And uh, I, th I think he'll, he'll be answering this question a lot on his book tour, and I think he'll come out of it. I think he'll, he'll get to the right place, and he'll recognize his anger was really misplaced. No, no surprise, Matt, that it came up now, given where we are with the Me Too movement, and really not a lot of discussion about uh, President Clinton and the Monica Lewinsky scandal over this whole Me Too eruption. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it reminds me of the old adage from the film It's a Wonderful Life, where every time you hear a bell ring, an angel gets its wings. Every time he shows up in public, the Democrats lose another House seat. And I, I think the lesson here is that Hollywood hasn't learned anything. You have Stephen Colbert coddling the world's most famous sexual predator, asking him about Monica Lewinsky, but, you know, there are multiple incredible accusations of rape against this man, and they're completely giving him a pass on it. It's, it just reeks of the worst kind of hypocrisy, and they've learned nothing from the Weinstein scandal to continue to treat this guy with such kid gloves. And, I mean, when's the last time you've heard somebody on the right being given, oh, well, you didn't do so well yesterday. Would you like a do-over? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty incredible. Let me switch gears, ask you about the forthcoming um, IG report. Uh, Mark, uh, this Sunday on Sunday Morning Futures, we heard Devin Nunes uh, tell us that there are going to be more uh, hearings and testimonies this week in terms of FBI agents testifying in, in, in front of uh, the Senate committee. New developments into that Clinton email investigation. Fox News is reporting that Peter Strzok, the FBI agent, had a larger role than first thought in overseeing both investigations, the Trump investigation and the Hillary Clinton email scandal. Lawmakers are questioning a top FBI official honing in on agent Peter Strzok and his role with the Clinton probe and Russia investigation. Something House Intelligence Chairman Devin Nunes told me first on Sunday Morning Futures. Listen to this. Well, we're a little disappointed in that uh, this has been delayed another week. And my experience uh, with this is a lot of time the lawyers get a hold of it and they start to water down the report. So it was supposed we were supposed to receive it this week. Now it's been pushed to next week. I know there are some interviews with FBI officials on this this week. Uh, these are also officials that we're very interested in because a lot of the Clinton email investigation team are the same people that are involved uh, with the scandals that we're, we're interviewing and we're investigating. Mark, this is something you've written about in your recent op-ed for The Hill. Yeah, no, I think it's very clear that Peter Strzok played a huge role in this, that he was heavily biased, and everything he touched in both these investigations is really suspect. And I think, I think uh, Independent Counsel Mueller knew this when he fired them because of the text messages given him by the Inspector General, but he didn't take or removed from the investigation all the evidence they touched. In fact, he even covered up for five months why they hadn't been fired until that came out. So I think, yes, we're waiting for this Inspector General's report. That is the watershed document here. This Inspector General is incredibly thorough. I suspect right now his report looks a little like Swiss cheese when people have tried to redact it. And, and I think at the same time, though, if you notice in the McCabe report, he is excellent about coming back and answering every single question that people raise. But, you know, we know that, Matt, in the last IG report, there were recommended criminal charges against a Andrew McCabe. Where does that stand now? Will people actually see accountability and a cleanup at the leadership at the FBI? Yeah, I think that's coming. And I think a big step towards that is going to be today because Strzok's boss is going to be testifying in a closed door hearing on the Hill. And he's going to, and he's cooperating. He's going to t reveal everything in terms of uh, the oversight, uh, in terms of using these foreign spies to investigate uh, the Trump campaign, in terms of his handling of the email investigation of Hillary Clinton, where clearly laws were broken. So I think it's all beginning to unravel. And just a few, just a day ago, a uh, text that had previously been redacted was revealed unredacted, showing that in December of 2015, Strzok was uh, recruiting Oconus Lures, which is a code word for foreign individuals who are, are going to be used to uh, 
uh, surveil uh, American citizens. So uh, this is really blowing up, and I think in the next week or so, um, the table is really going to turn, and, and there's going to be an undeniable and uh, irrevocable demand for accountability uh, at FBI leadership yeah. and for the people who've left the FBI recently. You know, it feels to me, I don't know how you see it, Mark, but it feels to me like Jim Comey wasn't actually the, the lead in terms of driving a narrative. It was really Andrew McCabe and, and Peter Strzok. I mean, I don't, I don't know where Jim Comey fits into all of this. He was the director, obviously. Uh, but we're going to learn more once we get that IG report. Do you agree with Devin Nunes that the longer we wait, the more uh, perhaps it's getting worked on and rewritten by lawyers? Well, I think there's no question about that. That's why I think that uh, FBI folks are trying to get as much of it redacted. I think, I think people in the report uh, who see it as blasting them are trying to soften it and respond. I think that's part of a typical and expected process here. But if this takes a few more weeks, I'd be worried. It was supposed to be a two-week process. The, the public has been waiting really a year and a half or so for this report. They need it now because it really answers so many questions that have been kept from the public. Who did what? Who was responsible? Were procedures followed you know, in, in the Clinton investigation the, the way they should have been? It sure doesn't, from the outside, look like they were. But this is the first real detailed independent look. The public needs it as soon as possible. I agree with you. And, you know, you, you said a similar sentiment on Sunday when you joined me on Sunday Morning Futures. And then the president tweeted what you said, Mark. Did you catch that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's the first time I've ever been tweeted by a president. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, people, look, people pick and choose those things that they like. I, I try to play, play it straight. Yeah. Uh, well, here's, I, the, here's what you said. We, we got it on screen. You said, why are there people from the Clinton Foundation on the Mueller staff? Why is there an independent counsel to go after uh, people and their families uh, for unrelated offenses? Constitution was set up to prevent this. Uh, stormtrooper tactics almost is what you said and that's what the president uh, retweeted well, well tweeted about what he said he was obviously watching you so obviously he agrees but you know you do have to question why it is that there are so many one-sided people on the on the Mueller team they some of them were donors to, to Clinton well, well that's right well they were donors but but to have a lawyer on the prosecutorial team that actually represented the Clinton Foundation that is really odd you know, you really wonder from day one here, why was he appointed? What changed? You know, uh, you know the FBI director and McCabe all testified, and you can you can just look it up, right? In May of 2017, that there was no obstruction of justice, that no investigations had been tampered with, and they all read the Comey memos. At least McCabe did. Remember, he circulated it, so there was no new information here that would have triggered the appointment of a special counsel. Other than firing the FBI director, and if any person needed to be fired, I don't think there's much question that it was James Comey. Yeah, and, and we remember that other uh, text uh, from Peter Strzok to Lisa Page, we need an insurance policy. So I'm wondering if this whole special counsel investigation was, in fact, just that, the insurance policy. Uh, more will be revealed, gentlemen. Thank you so much for weighing in. We appreciate it. Good to see you again. Mark Penn, Matt Brainard, thank you so much, gentlemen.